This is your typical sound wave. The x-axis measures time, the y-axis measures the amplitude or volume of my voice. So that means the louder I get, then the higher the waveform on the y-axis. But what if we were to record something like a chord, where there's multiple pitches being played at once? While my voice can't do that, other instruments can, like a violin. <laughs> All right, so here is a waveform for a not so well practiced Mozart concerto, but nonetheless good enough for our sake because we can see the different sound waves. Here is actually the same pitch, it is an F sharp. And the way we know that it's the same pitch is because if we zoom in, we can see that the number of oscillations per second is the same, which corresponds to the frequency and therefore note. Versus something in the beginning where I played a chord. And if we zoom into that sound wave, we can see it's a lot more messy, and that's because there are multiple pitches being played at the same time. But if we don't have perfect pitch, and we only have this waveform, how can we tell what notes are being played in this chord? Well, we can actually use something called the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform can be thought of as a mathematical domain change, where the sound wave's x-axis changes from time to frequency. We can visualize this transformation on the violin chord's sound waves. The side facing the dot is the time and amplitude graph, which is what our original sound wave is graphed on. Each colored wave represents a note in the chord with its unique frequency. If we graph amplitude with respect to each note's frequency instead of time, we get this green peak graph on the side facing the asterisk. This is the graph of the Fourier transform, where each peak represents each note in that note's volume. Simplifying the signal to frequencies and their amplitudes allows us to do things like add filters that can block out specific high or low notes, which is used from music's audio processing to biology's detection and remote monitoring of endangered species. However, there is one more important conclusion to draw from the Fourier transform seen through its mathematical expression. XFTs are input signal, like the violin sound wave. This signal, when plugged into the integral, gets transformed to capital X of F, which is the Fourier amplitude for that frequency. Remember that as we're doing this, we're changing the x-axis domain, but the y-axis is still measuring amplitude. Now you might be wondering, what do we do with this complex exponential term? Well, we can simplify this exponential using Euler's, and rewrite the Fourier transform simply as a sum of cosine and sine functions weighted by the input signal. This carries heavy importance in areas such as image analysis, where Fourier's is used to compress images into more sendable sine and cosine functions. By breaking images down into sinusoidal functions, we can understand so much more from images of the cosmos, or even potentially diagnose cancer cells from ultrasounds.